Hey everybody, it's Matt with Rocky's War Room. Uh, I have for you tonight a first impressions of Rommel and kind of sort of a review. Uh, you could say it's kind of half and half because um, I have read through this book. Uh, this is Rommel from Honor Games. Uh, it's a tabletop game of great battles in the Second World War by Sam Mustafa. Mustafa. And I hope I didn't butcher that, Sam. I apologize if I did. But anyhow, um, first impressions. Uh, it's a hardbound book. Nice and sturdy. Hard stock, card stock. Glossy outside. Uh, a great description of what Rommel is. Um, large battles and multiplayer games. And uh, they typically represent reinforced companies or sometimes whole battalions. And uh, there's unit cards that you can print out online, but we'll talk about that. Uh, but <clears throat> Rommel is a uh, big, a, a, a large, well, well, let me start here. Uh, from what I know, it's a 6x4 table. And it's typically gridded, or you can use hex, hexes, but it's typically gridded uh, with a 8, eight 6 inch squares by... 12 six inch squares across on the long table edge and each square each square represents one kilometer so that's why typically in this game which i've heard a lot of people say has no roads because it's signifying one kilometer and one kilometer i mean i don't know how many miles it is but i know it's bigger than a mile it's 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 huge so one kilometer of space could have several rolls uh, roads in it so it's just assuming that you're a large unit inside of this one kilometer of space. So there's going to be small villages, little bitty forests, hills, rolling hills, and things like that uh, inside of it. Uh, but with that said, um, when I got it, I cracked it open. Immediately I cracked it open, <laughs> as we all do. And it has this great piece um, about... Believe that's about um, Rommel himself. Yeah, it is. Okay, uh, I didn't want to say that wrong. <laughs> uh, just a short, um, I guess, a biography of, of Rommel. It's two pages, um, and it gives you a description of Rommel who came together in two th during 2015 and 16, thanks to the Tyler efforts of all these people here. Um, one of the people I've seen is the Garbox Battle Mats. They actually make a battle mat for this game, which is great. And we see our table of contents. <clears throat> and then they have the first two pages, uh, preparing for play. Uh, you have a base game and an advanced game. Uh, I would strongly recommend, just based off of reading this, to play the basic game two or three, maybe four times before you start throwing it into the advanced game. Because the advanced game is... is large and multiplayer games and it's army building systems to create balanced opposing forces there's multi-day battles um, the rules for complex battles involving engineering amphibious landings and airborne operations and so on it adds planes and um, things of that nature but uh, <clears throat> in Rommel basically every uh, whatever force you choose which they're in this book um, there's already a prepared force that you can download uh, the uh, operations cards, um, the cards that you put under your units or the cards that you want to use for the game. There's a beginning, beginner scenario that you can print these cards out. But uh, what you will do is whatever force you're going to be playing, you will print out this thing called the command post. And <clears throat> the command po post is broke down into sections. And basically, um, uh, you have your ops file. You have your events, you have your defensive tactics, you have your offensive tactics, and you have your general tactics. Maybe I can get a zoom in of that so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, and basically the way this works, this is basically your tactics page for your sp uh, particular army. Um, this is what you can do with your units. This is uh, de events, defensive tactics, and offensive tactics. At the beginning of each, every turn, you're going to get a series of ops dice. And you'll put these ops dice in your file here. And <clears throat> when the dice, uh, when it's your turn, um, I should say that this system is a you-go-I-go system. 
And when it is your turn, you're going to take dice from your ops file uh, based on the orientation of the dice, what you, whatever you rolled the dice, you're going to roll the certain amount of dice and then place them in your ops file and whatever based off of whatever uh, number that you get, you could complete these events through the events phase. Um, like off road here, um, you, uh, what's it say? Yeah. So get close here so you guys can read it. Units using road movement this turn are not tipped. They can move again and in the tactical phase. So you would have to roll two sixes and have two sixes in your, your, uh, ops file, as you can see. Uh, in order to place two dice from your ops file down to your your uh, event that you want to do during the event phase. Um, what this reminds me of is uh, Saga. And I don't want to say that to deter anybody if you don't like Saga, because there's many uh, facets of this game here that are very, very innovative and a lot of fun. And things that <laughs> I would want to do in a World War II game. But it kind of works at the sa as the same type of thing. Where you have a pool of dice. And you can do certain things in the event phase. You can spend ops dice to do road movement. Which road movement means you're going to move from one square to the next square to the next square. Um, it's basically this command post is your command this is what you're doing at this level and i do very much like this um this is actually um one of the things i really really like about this this uh, rule book is these this idea of being an overall commander and you're as an overall commander you have certain things that you can or orders and things that you can give to your units out on the table and these are the certain things that you, you know, are able to do to affect the other player or to put yourself in a better position. So you're left with managing your dice because <clears throat> at the end of the turn, you can either leave dice up here to hold on to them. And if you do not reset your dice by basically by, you know, reset your dice, if you are uh, discarding your dice, if you don't reset your dice, you can keep these dice in here and you're going to get more dice to add to that. But you got a maximum of 10 dice allowed to keep in your ops file. So it's very, very awesome um, the way this works here. So, um, and you have, you know, mid war, early war, late war, that sort of, those sort of things. Uh, whatever you're playing, this one here says Germans mid war. So you would print out that uh, ops uh, command post. So that's the command post. That's one aspect of this game. Then you go into units, uh, unit cards and miniatures. Now, these cards can be printed as a do-it-yourself cards um, where you fill them in for whatever unit you have. And then you can either play with the cards or you can put them under the unit like this right here. And as uh, the classic uh, Sam Mustafa's games, they have certain steps based on losses. Um, like the five, if you take a loss, you go down to four. Or take another loss, you go down to three. And certain special abilities are able to use over here, but I believe that means that they're foot units. They're not armored units. Um, that's, that's just the basics. That's just a quick overview. And then it goes into the phases of the game. So you have that operations phase, like I was talking about, which starts with a reset. You have new ops step an untip step. So when a unit, any unit on the board in one of these squares, when any anytime they do anything, they're tipped to the side or tapped, if you will, but tipped to the side to uh, denote that they did something. So uh, this is where you untip them. Then you have the events phase where back in, you know, on your command post, you can do these series events. <clears throat> and then there's road movement. Then there's the tactical phase. And then, of course, the status phase, the victory step, and the marker step to remove markers, that sort of thing, and victory. Um, and here's an example of the table. Now, when you lay, a, lay out your table, it's you, you, you don't really, you can grid it, right? Just like this. Just take a grass mat, take a black marker, and grid it if, that, if that's what you want to do. What I'm going to do is I already have a table flocked over there. 
I'm going to lay down the light flock and then the very dark flock in a very thin line, I'm going to mark um, with black mark of the lines, very thin. And then I'm going to take Elmer's glue and Elmer's glue little patches either in the corners or just in a line of just some coarse turf to denote where the squares are on the table and it doesn't look like black marker. Or you can go to Cigar Box Battle Mats and they have gridded mats. I believe there's three or four uh, on their website and you can check that out. So, but uh, it talks about, you know, diagonal adjacent and, or, you know, ordinary, or, I can't even say that word. I'm not even going to try. How many units you can have in an actual square itself uh, is three. So three units can be in one six inch square, that sort of thing. Uh, you can play this in any scale you want, scaling up, scaling down. But I, I believe this was meant for 15 millimeter, which I think works out pretty good. Uh, then you have train types. So this is where it gets into the nitty gritty um, <clears throat> of terrain itself. So you denote pieces of terrain like soft ground, urban areas, um, and mountains and woods with one little, a little marker in, inside the six inch square, or you can mark it with a tree, one tree in the, in the middle of the square. That means it's a wooded area. Um, all this does is really, it, it hinders movement and it's one kilometer. So it's very large. You know, the scale is very large. Uh, one rep one square represents uh, a kilometer, and that means the terrain is placed on the table does not usually represent individual terrain features, but rather areas of terrain. So if there's nothing there, it's just open terrain. And then you have waterways, rivers, and bridges. Obviously, you're not going to have streams denoted, but you do have rivers, and you can only cross those rivers at a bridge. Uh, so if you're in a hex in a square, or um, uh, a hex or a square that has a bridge noto notated across it, you are allowed to cross into there, but not across the river. And then of course you have zones of control. Um, so basically the eight boxes surrounding you is your zone of control. And if you move into an, an enemy square at all, um, that is denoting that you are attacking. So you're moving your your battalion into another square where there's another battalion and you guys are going to war. So, and then it has chapter two, it, units and markers. Now this is when they go in a little bit more depth on the cards itself. So your unit will sit amongst this dotted line with the card underneath it, which that's neat because it allows you to keep track of your steps uh, on, the, on the unit itself. You don't have to use these cards. As long as you keep track of your steps and you know their armor values, you're fine. And then they have these neat little denote, denote, denotations. Uh, this is A Company. Uh, I believe it's A, uh, the 352nd edition. Or, uh, I don't know, edition. I said 352nd Infantry Division. That's it. So <clears throat> it's obviously all Germans. This here is a Grenadier. It's obviously infantry. This is armor. This is an armor value, which is in a red box. And this here is self-propelled artillery. It has a symbol for the self-propelled artillery to let you know. It has a range, which is 12 squares away, which is pretty good, and a barrage value. This here is a step. It's got multiple numbers in it. This means the attack value and the uh, defense value of the square that they're in. That's the unit they have. So they don't really have attack at all, but they do have a defense of two. So obviously because it's self-propelled artillery. Um, and they go into, he goes into explanations of all of what I just told you guys. Let me pan out. And uh, the different units, uh, if they're marked with an R, they're rare. Uh, the NATO symbol is armored infantry. And there's something, uh, a difference between armor and armored. So if they're armor, it's just a tank. If they're armored, it's an armored division, I believe. Armored infantry... Armor and armored infantry collectively are known as armored units. So, <clears throat> so if they're armored infantry, like with half tracks and things of like that nature, they'll be denoted with the NATO symbol itself because it's armored infantry. 
So it's a combination because the Americans obviously had several units with combined arms, obviously, and uh, that would denote that with those symbols there. And of course, you got rockets uh, and infantry support, self-propelled artillery, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and then in this game too, um, they have certain markers you're going to need, objective markers and things like that. Um, they talk about elements and their parent elements with their IDs and stuff like that on this page. That's kind of neat how he breaks it down uh, with their parent companies and stuff. And you can denote that by seeing that on the card itself. Um, <clears throat> you have slow, low supply markers. And there, for some scenarios, um, one or both players are going to need to create some low supply markers because they're going to run out of supply in certain scenarios, which, you know, adds a little bit of story to the whole thing. So... She just talk, talks about uh, markers. And here we get into the meat and potatoes of the game. It breaks down the anatomy of the command post, uh, basically telling you where everything is and what it means. Uh, and you prepare the combat post. So he even breaks it down for you of what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> uh, he's got a few smart assy things in this book, which I absolutely love in a rules writer. Gives, gives himself... Uh, gives it uh, a little bit of flavor as you're reading going yeah we know yep <laughs> now they also have uh, he has a description here of period and nationality so basically um, uh, if the, this is these are the symbols um, if there's allied symbols mid late obviously we know that's French American British American that sort of thing British and Americans plus the free allied contingents you have Italians, Germans, Soviets, French, and British. Early war. So, <clears throat> it just kind of breaks it down for you to tell you this is the period. Here's the nationalities. And then it talks about your ops dice. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the command post. Um, this just goes a brief overview on how to use ops dice. And if you remember, the ops dice is what is in the file. Uh, in your file, in your command post. You roll at the beginning of the turn how many ops dice that you get, uh, and it you know it denotes a number, and then based on those numbers on the dice is what you can do with your events and your tactics and your defensive tactics, and you can even keep dice uh, into in the uh, in the ops file. You don't have to use everything uh, in case you want to do some sort of defensive tactic during your opponent's player's turn. So uh, there's the operations phase. The events phase, the road movement phase, the tactical phase, the status phase, and the ending of the game. And that ends our, that basically ends the basic rules. Now there is a chapter four, which is supply and isolation. It says each unit on the table has one or two possible supply statuses, supplied or low on supply, which, I mean, they did run out. <laughs> um, you have to draw... You have to have some sort of supply source, and, and he describes this here as supply source, because if you're cut off, you're going to be low on supplies, and it's going to hurt. And I really do like that element. Um, that's one thing I wish they could represent somehow in bolt action. I mean, we've done it. We make house rules, but uh, there, there's a 15 millimeter markers down here from Battlefront to serve as an identity to support a source for each side, where the source is coming from. Uh, of your supply. Uh, <clears throat> it goes into a little bit about isolation and then it goes into your movement and how you can move. Uh, as you can see here, there's an example of movement. It tells you how it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. Uh, each unit will have a movement value on their card. Uh, if I can find it here. I believe it's on their card, is it not? Oh no, each, each symbol has a certain movement value, I believe. Let's look at that. Here we go. Road movement. If they're foot troops, they're three. Three squares. All others are six. That's pretty simple. <laughs> um, of course, if there's there's tactical movement, and uh, if you have uh, armored or, or combined armored with the NATO symbol, armored infantry, it's move two and others in low supply and, or uh, non-open areas, it's one. So it's pretty... I mean, you can do the road movement phase, and then you can do tactical movement. And then there's flank attacks. It tells you how, let's see, uh, 
yeah, flank attacks, making attacks. Uh, just to, I'm just I'm flying through this because I think that um, it'd be really hard for me to explain on a review exactly how combat works. There's there's a lot involved with it. Well, not a ton, but um, if you played his games before, uh, you you already get it. You already got it in your gold, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can call call for artillery support barrages. Uh, you have certain combat grids. That's part of combat, obviously. Um, I won't get into that. You got recce, uh, terrain shifts, infantry support, tank shock. You have those sort of things. Uh, you can ha it goes through tank battles uh, and how to apply hits. Uh, prepared positions. That's another cool thing. You could have these prepared positions like dug in. Um, you need some sort of marker. You can actually download these on Honor, uh, honorwargames.com. I think that's believe that's the website. Um, uh, Samustafa.com. You find it there. Uh, but you can print these out on hard card stock, which I printed everything out that he had sitting on there on hard card stock. Uh, even even the the command posts. But the command posts I put in a. I went up to uh, Kinko's and or FedEx. Kinko's, whatever you want to call it, and I had them bind them all together. So I have every single one of the command posts and four books because you can I can you can do multiplayer stuff with this game. So I have four books and it didn't it, it was a little hefty, but I'm going to use them forever. So <laughs> uh, price wise, uh, and then it's got an example of combat, and how it works, and how retreat works. It's not that complicated. It just seems daunting. Um, also, you can reorganize. Right, so you can use a, a, a reorganizing event to gain steps back for your units. So if you lost two steps on one of your units, he's no longer a fresh unit. Uh, he can reorganize, and you remove one of its losses, and thus restore one of the boxes on his track. And if you remember on the cards, if you played Blucher or Blucher, however you want to call it, uh, you lose steps in, in, in Blucher too, which is these steps right here. So if you take a loss, you're down to three to two. With reorganization, you can go back up one. So that's what that is there. And then we get to the advanced game. Now, I just skimmed through this. Uh, I was so excited about all these extra rules. I just kind of skimmed through this. Uh, <clears throat> table scale, a.k.a. Stalingrad on a budget. <laughs> Uh, and it's a, it talks about here about playing with a hex grid. It doesn't really change much because you still have the sides to where they're at. Uh, and you have multiple terrain types. Uh, you can have reinforcements, multi-day battles, because this game is played. Uh, one battle is considered uh, one full day of battle. So once you hit nightfall, the game's over. So, And it talks about that. You can it even got club games. Uh, Untipping by ops, so you can untip cards by uh, by using ops dice, I believe. Uh, additional victory conditions, shaky units, unified command, commander skill, unreliable equipment, advanced placing, low fuel, you know, rules, tank hunters, river crossings and boats. <laughs> you can have boats across rivers and stuff like that where infantry can cross. You have conditions for weather and environment, minefields, pioneers, cavalry. Uh, amphibious landings, recon units, airborne operations, engineering. Uh, and I believe in engineering they can actually build bridges. <laughs> so um, then they have a section, chapter 10 here, on creating game units. So he brings you step-by-step -step process on how to create your own units. Uh, they, they give an example of artillery and what they are, that sort of thing. And those cards that you print out, your do-it-yourself cards, you just pick and choose from here. Boom, it's done. So uh, this one here is mid-war armor. So you're looking at a Stuart, a Sherman, an M10, or M3 Lee. Uh, late war, mid-war. You got artillery and infantry. Infantry is pretty basic. You have green infantry, which <laughs> are questionable. Infantry and elite infantry. So it's pretty easy um, to actually create a unit in this game, and it's very versatile. Um, it, it, it's very f user friendly uh, as far as that goes. So if you're into that, creating your own um, units itself, otherwise they will give you in the back of this book too, which I will get to. Uh, you have uh, army lists, I 
right here. Uh, that's actually the next thing. Army building, where you build your army based off a of points value. And the E means early war. Um, you have early war, early wars, things like that. Uh, what you're allowed to take. Um, American elements for mid-war, late war. Because uh, obviously the American army. And it gives you a little description of the American army here. A little bit of fluff, which is great. I love that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, that's uh, army building. But uh, where were we at here? Yeah, creating units. So as you can see, if you want to create your own units, have fictitious battles all day long, boom, that's what you can do right there. Um, creating artillery units, creating infantry units, creating armor units. tells you exactly how to do that, which is great. And how to use army lists. You know, it tells you here. And these are the army lists. These are the Americans. This is the British and Commonwealth Army right here for early, mid, and late. The French Army, early. The early, yes. The German Army for early, mid, and late war. The Italian Army for early, mid. The Soviet Army for early, mid, late war. And it tell, he gives you a little bit of piece, a little piece here, the uh, philosophy of the army lists. Uh, there is no Soviet or German cavalry units, no Soviet airborne, no special rules for mountain divisions, and no unit-specific lists such as guards, armored, who were typically 25 to 30% stronger than the other British armored divisions. Moreover, you may see a piece of kit in a unit summarizes in Chapter 10, but it doesn't appear in the army list. These are deliberate omissions and prevent the book from becoming enormous. <laughs> He says, however, you can use Rommel's open architectural system, architecture system, to amend these lists as you see fit. So there you go. You can mold them however you want. However you want. It, it, it doesn't matter. There's an open architecture. Um, and then it's got the fictional scenarios. Fictional scenarios. I believe there's other scenarios on uh, SamMustafa.com. Um there is eight of them and uh, tells you how to score. And then, of course, they, he includes appendix, appendixes, appendices in the back, quick, quick reference sheet. And I will tell you, I've been on sammustafa.com, and he does have a ton of things you can download. I obviously did because I went up and I spent like 50 bucks on printing stuff out. <laughs> you do not have to take it that far, ladies and gentlemen. You do not. You do not have to take it that far. Uh, overall, um, I did kind of give you a quick review, I guess. But my first impressions of this game, uh, looks like I'm going to be converting my uh, war game table to hexes. And I'm going to be playing some of this. Um, my very first impression was, really, grids? How in the heck is that going to work? And after seeing what he's done here... Um, it's impressed me. Uh, I think he did a really great job of uh, laying out the rules. Um, I understood it because I have played, you know, Blucher, Blucher. Um, the layout was perfect. It's got basic and advanced. Uh, I'll be playing the basic game for a little while. It looks complicated, but it's actually very easy. Um, Movement is easy, which makes things faster, because a lot of times when you're playing bolt action, some people take forever to move their units. I say the only thing that bothers me, but is a necessity for this game, but the only thing that bothers me is the Yugo Igo system. I don't care for those systems, but it works for Rommel, and I know why. Those command posts, the cards... And the way it, it, it ebbs and flows. So I would definitely recommend you picking up this game. Especially if you're into 15mm World War II. You can use smaller scales like Pico Armor. You can go get uh, 3mm or something. 15mm uh, I think would probably be the max. Unless you have a 8 foot by 12 foot table in your house. And you want to do 12 inch squares for you know 28mm. You, you can still do that. <laughs> But uh, all in all, great book. I definitely would recommend it. I li love the way it's uh, lined out, laid out. Um, and I'm sure he's going to have more scenarios later on on his website. 
possibly. Uh, but this is definitely worth it. And don't let the grid stop you because this is more of a huge, you know, you're, you're not directing platoons. You're directing whole entire battalions and divisions and stuff like that. So it's not, it's, it's the overall commander, uh, of the battles and stuff. But anyway, thank you very much for spending this time with me with a look for Rommel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do, uh, tell a friend. Uh, like this video. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you think I'm wrong about this or anything like that. I'd love a discussion about it. And tell me what you guys think of this these rule set. I'd really appreciate that. And it's all last but not least, from me to you. Ta-ta! See you next